Hey everyone, it is Mike the Dad Nerd here, and today we're going to be covering a topic that, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about this topic, but I'm going to show you guys how I do it, and that is how to back up certain Unraid shares to off-site storage. So backup is obviously extremely important, and how do you back up your critical files somewhere off-site? Now there's a lot of different ways, like I said, to do this, but one of the easiest ways is to use an online provider like Backblaze. I really like Backblaze, and their B2 offering has been really rock solid for me, and the pricing is actually really affordable. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to get Cloudberry installed, that's a Docker, you can run on RAID, so get Cloudberry installed, how to get a bucket set up on Backblaze to back up two, and then how to set everything up and make sure the two talk and set a schedule and get our Unraid server backed up appropriately. So we're actually gonna start over on the Backblaze side. So let's go to backblaze.com. You guys can sign up for account and get everything going. And once you have a Backblaze account, what you're gonna wanna do is set up a bucket. Think of a bucket as a place where all these files are going to get stored. Now for me, the way I organize things is I actually do one bucket per share that I'm gonna be backing up. So if you guys have different shares in your Unraid, I treat those as different backups. For me, that's just the simplest way for me to do it. You can obviously group it however you want, but for me, it just keeps it in my mind a little bit uh, more organized on when those backups are running. There are certain shares that I don't need to back up on a daily basis. There are certain shares that I only need to back up on a monthly basis. So I separated out one bucket per share and that's how I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So again, you have you're over at backblaze.com, you have created your account and you've clicked on buckets. So we're actually going to click on create a bucket. And for this we are going to do test backup bucket. You're going to make it private and going to click create a bucket. All right, that bucket name is already in use. Let's do test backup uh the dad nerd. I doubt that's been used. Okay, so now you can see we have the test backup the dad nerd bucket. And so our bucket is created. You don't really need to change anything else on the bucket settings. That should be good to go. But the next thing we need to do is actually go over here to app keys. And we are going to create an app key to plug into Cloudberry once we get that installed. So let's go to app keys. So now over in application keys, scroll down the page a little bit. And you're going to see add a new application key. And we're going to click on that. And we're gonna name this test key. And for all of you security guys out there, don't worry, I'm gonna delete this key later. So uh, as soon as I'm done recording this video, it'll be deleted. So I'm gonna, I don't mind you guys seeing the actual key. We're gonna allow access to all buckets, read and write. This way too, if we needed to restore from Cloudberry, Cloudberry can actually do the restore if it reads it and can write it. Uh, otherwise, if you're only backing up two and you don't need to worry about the restore, you would do write only. But obviously, um, for our sake, we do want it to be able to do both. And we're going to click create new key. Now, this is important. This will only show up once. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up a text file. And we're going to copy both these things in. So I'm going to type key ID. I'm going to go over here and copy that string. And I'm going to get the application key. Copy that. Application key. And there we go. Okay, so we can minimize this for now, but we have our key ID and our application ID. You will need those here in a little bit once we get Cloudberry set up. So now you're gonna wanna get into your Unraid dashboard. And if you don't already have the community applications tab, Give that a quick Google. It's like the number one first thing I always recommend people do when they get Unraid is get community applications installed. So we're gonna go over to apps and we're just gonna search for Cloudberry. Cloudberry backup right there. Now I already have that installed, but there'll be an install button for you. You want to install it and I'll click, and I'll show you guys my settings here. For storage, really the only thing you need to change here is storage. If this for some reason is different for you, the default uh, 
the way it's set up should work. But this is essentially saying, let Cloudberry have access to all of our shares because your shares are going to be under mount slash user. So this the way it's set up now, it will have access to all the shares, which is what we want it to do. So then you would click apply and the application will be done downloading. So in order to access your Cloudberry instance, you'll either click on the Docker and go to web UI, or you can just go to the IP address of your Unraid box, colon 7802 for the port number, and that will take you to your Cloudberry instance. Now, if this is the first time you're launching Cloudberry, Cloudberry does come with a fee. And maybe I should have mentioned that up front. I believe it's about $30 right now to get the license. When you go, it'll give you a link to go out and get the license for Cloudberry. You're gonna want the Linux version of that license. So it's not the enterprise version. Uh, it's, I think it's only about $30 again. So get the enterprise, or sorry, get the Linux key version and plug in that key to Cloudberry and you should be up and going. It's a one-time fee, not recurring. So you should be fine. In my opinion, it's $30 that is worth it. Um, and, and it works really, really well. So you guys can see in my instance, I already have two backups set up. So two of my shares are already set to backup. But if you were starting fresh, we're actually gonna go to file, create new backup plan. And it's gonna say, hey, where do you want me to send this? So if we're gonna go to cloud storage, where do you want to go? So I already have these two buckets set up, but we're gonna set up a new one. So click the plus button and you're gonna click on backblaze B2. And here we go. So display name again, I'm gonna make this whatever you want. So test backup the dad nerd, just to keep it simple. Now here's where you need the key ID and the application key. So again, I'm gonna open up this text file, key ID, and here's the one trick. So I copied it to get it into here. You can't just paste. You actually have to go to clipboard, paste it here, click submit, and then in key ID, right click and click paste. And then you're good. Same thing for the application key. We'll go here, we will copy it, control C, go back, clipboard, delete what we had and paste it in, click submit, and then right click, paste. So after you've done that, if you click on bucket, if everything worked as planned, it should give you your different buckets that you have. So now I can click test backup the dad nerd and everything is great. So we'll click okay. So we're gonna click on test backup the dad nerd as our destination, click continue. You can put in a plan name here. I'm just gonna leave it the same for now. You don't need to change any of these settings. So here is where you select what you want to back up to Backblaze. So we're actually gonna pop this down and you're looking for the storage item. So if you open storage, this should be all of your shares that you have. So all your shares should show up here and really you just select which one or ones you want to back up to this bucket. And again, I like to separate them out into different backups. You don't need to though. You can select multiple shares and back them up. But for me, let's pretend, uh, let's just back up our domains folder. And you can get more granular too. If you want to pop this down and only back up subfolders, you can do that. But I'm just gonna back up the entire domain share. I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna back up all the files. Again, you can mess with these settings if they apply to you. And here, this is also where it's up to you. I like to enable compression and encryption. That way when the files are over on Backblaze, they are encrypted and we have the key to that encryption. And compression, why not, right? This does take a little bit longer in your backups to compress and to encrypt the files, but I think it's worth it. It creates a smaller file size overall over on Backblaze, which means it's costing you less per month to store that data. And encryption is always a good thing. So that if anyone were to get access to your buckets over on Backblaze, they wouldn't have access to the actual files without the password. So we're gonna click both. I'm always going for AES-256. Enter a password. Whichever password you want, this is something you are creating. We're gonna click continue. It's gonna warn you to keep that password safe because if you do lose that password, you will not have access to this file. So make sure it's a password that you will remember. Retention policies, I click use default because I have my default settings in Cloudberry already. But if you want to do some sort of retention policy, you can set that all here, whether it's a number of file versions back you wanna delete after certain file versions. If it's a date, you know, after 30 days, if a file has been deleted, then delete it from the backup. Um, but I'm gonna click on use default. 
And here is your scheduler. I always, I love to schedule my backups. So this is where I was talking about the reason I separate out my backups is because certain shares don't need to be backed up for me uh, very often. So, but certain ones like my next cloud backup, for example, all of our next cloud files for our family, I want making, I want to make sure that's backed up every single day. So I run that one on a daily basis. Um, I think every, maybe every three days or something like that compared to other backups that I have run on a monthly basis. So you can do your schedule here. So if we were to leave this the same, it would recur every day at midnight. And we'll click continue. Here is also where you can set to receive emails. I would suggest this and I would keep it at the standard when the plan fails. This way you will get an email to your email inbox when a backup has failed. And I will say this has happened once to me. Um, it was actually due to an internet outage we had, but it was nice to know that that backup had failed. So I just went in and, and reran the backup. So now you're done. Now you can click to run this plan now if you're, this is your first backup and you want to get that backup started. I would run that now, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that because I, I have another backup running. So we're going to click done. Now the one setting I will say it's really nice to use because obviously if we're backing up something from Unraid, there is a lot of data there. And I'm guessing for you guys, unless you are fortunate enough to have gigabit upload internet speed, this might take quite a few days or maybe even weeks months depending on your upload speed and how much data you're trying to send to Backblaze. So what I like to do is I know that I have about 30 megabit up upload and I don't want Backblaze or the Cloudberry backup to take up all of that because I obviously have a lot of other things that need to use upload speed. Obviously now when we're working from home, we need that bandwidth for Zoom calls and, and FaceTimes and uploading to YouTube and things like that. So I limit the bandwidth. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on settings. You're gonna go to network. And I have mine set to about 10 megabits per second. Um, I think I'll give it a third of my overall bandwidth. So you check the box and type in it, but make sure you know it's in kilobits per second or actually kilobytes per second. Um, so just do that calculation and figure out what you wanna put here. I will say the first time I set this up, when I set up the first backup, I clicked run now. So it was already running. And then I made this setting change. It appears to me that this setting change does not take effect until the backups are stopped and the next one starts. So if you click, if you make this change and you click close and you have a backup running, you can go to that backup, click stop, and then start it again, and it should apply those limits. But if you are, it will not apply those limits to an already running backup. It'll do it the next time that backup runs. Well, that's about it. Now you have your shares backing up to Backblaze and you can rinse and repeat that process for all your other shares that you want. If you guys have any questions, if I missed anything or rushed anything in this video, leave comments down below. I do monitor all the comments. I try to get back to people and help you guys solve your issues. But for me, this is a very, very affordable way to back up my data off site. So if anything were to happen to my home where the server is located, I know that my data is secure. Definitely feel free to hit the like button if this helped you out because that helps me out. Hit the subscribe button if you want. We do a lot of Unraid videos here. We're starting to pick up the tutorial train and do a lot more of those. So a lot more of those videos will be covering. But we also cover all sorts of technology videos over here at the Dad Nerd site. You guys enjoy. Enjoy the backed up safe data. But until I see you guys next time, tech on.